Well, how's it going everybody? This is Brad, Firework the Furnace. And today we're sitting in the garage because I have been looking all over YouTube for uh, some how-to videos on servicing the county line 25 ton log splitter. And there's not a whole lot out there. So I figured I would do some research and I would uh, make a video for everybody that's got one of these log splitters. I know these are very popular log splitters across the firewood community. So I figured I might be able to help somebody out by helping you service the log splitter. We're gonna change the engine oil and the hydraulic oil today, so stick around. All right, everybody, so real quick, before we get started with uh, the service on the log splitter, I need to catch up on some splitter stickers here. And I like to read all of your letters on my channel here so that people can discover other firewood channels and other outdoor type channels. And uh, just hear the kindness that comes out in the people that subscribe to this, this community. So the first one I got, I'm gonna read. It comes from Toby Olson and he says, Dear Brad, thank you for your kind note and sticker. The firewood the furnace emblem is now prominently displayed here in Woodtopia. My day job involves developing leaders of character here in Connecticut at one of our nation's service academies. And with that, I want to recognize and show appreciation for your leadership. The biggest reason I enjoy your channel so much is that you integrate good values, family, ethics, and hard work into your message. And I thank you for being a leader in this firewood community. Fine regards, Toby Olson. So a lot of kind words there from, from Toby, and he sent me his sticker, Cascade Pacific Woodworks. But he also sent me, and he didn't know this, but I am an avid challenge coin collector. And you can see up on my wall over here, I've got some of my coins displayed. It's not all of them, I need to get another holder for them. But he sent me a United States Coast Guard Academy challenge coin, which is really awesome. Uh, the other side says the Admiral James M. Lloyd Institute for Leadership, U.S. Coast Guard Academy. So that'll go in my collection with the other coins. So we'll put this on the splitter. All right, very good. Next one we got comes from Nick Andrews. And he sent me a whole bunch of his stickers. So we might be able to put them on the log splitter, maybe on the dump trailer, maybe in the garage on the toolbox. But there's his sticker. Dorchwood's Premium Firewood. So we'll get a place for him on here as well. Next one comes from a channel that's on YouTube and I'll link it right up there. In the top, it's Life in the 906. So if you haven't checked out that channel, please do. And he says, hey Brad, thanks for supporting my channel. I hope things are good in Maryland. That's from Mike. So we'll get Life in the 906 on the splitter as well. And we've got one more for today. And he says, greetings, Brad. I would like to first thank you for your service as a state trooper. I would also like to thank you for your channel sticker. I will be showcasing it on my own in an upcoming video. I hope you will accept a sticker of my own as a show of gratitude. Thanks and God bless the Driftless Homestead from Harold. So there we are, the Driftless Homestead. And we'll get that on the splitter. We might need to move to the other side. So let's switch over here. All right, here we go. I told you it was gonna happen. 
All you wonderful people keep sending me stickers for your channels, and there's no sense in advertising for somebody that I don't even know. Driftless Homestead, that's a nice looking sticker. All right, let's get to servicing the log splitter here. All right, so I kind of got laid out on the table what I think I'm gonna need for this, this service. Obviously, I've got my operating instructions for the splitter for the engine and for the splitter itself for motor oil and hydraulic oil. Got a ratchet with a six inch extension and a spark plug socket, oil filter wrench, a three quarter inch wrench, couple of funnels, some 10W30 motor oil, compressed air, and some hydraulic oil. But we'll get to all that in just a few minutes. The first thing I want to do though is take the compressed air and clean the log splitter off. Not only up here where everything gets piled up underneath the cylinder and back here in the back where these holes are, not everything gets falls out of there. But if you notice down here underneath the splitter, right back there where the motor meets the frame, back in here, stuff is really collecting in there and I didn't notice it until I was ready to service. So we're gonna clear all that out and blow everything out so it's all nice and clean and then we'll start draining some more. All right, so now we're down on the engine side of the log splitter. And I can tell you already that I don't like this design on where this drain plug is. So here's the drain plug for the engine oil. And it's got this plate that sticks out past where the, where the plug is. So I'm gonna pull this plug out and the oil's gonna run everywhere. Uh, it would be nice if the, the plate ended right here so the oil could run straight out into the drain pan. But we're not gonna have that luxury here. So we'll throw a drain pan under it. You need a 10 millimeter wrench for this drain plug and we'll drain the oil. Also, you should run the log splitter for a few minutes before you do this. Uh, I did start it up and let it run for a few minutes just to get the engine oil good and warm. So uh, it'll, it'll drain out a little bit easier. So as expected, oil is running all over the plate here, so you'll need a couple of rags to clean that off when it's done. All right, the oil is just about done draining now, so we'll go ahead and put the plug back in, check the plug, make sure the threads are good on it. We'll put that back in. There is a uh, crush washer here. Make sure you get that back on the plug when you put it, up, put it back together. And we'll just leave that pan there for the time being for any residual that may be underneath there that's gonna drip out. So we'll go ahead and add oil to it now. The uh, owner's manual says to fill it until it overflows at the neck. And they call for 10W30 in the conditions that I'm working in. I'll put a little chart on the screen here so you can see the oil recommendations for this engine based on what temperatures you're operating it in. All right, so I just started it up, let the engine run for a minute, recheck the oil and everything looks good. So the oil is changed. Now we're gonna check the spark plug and the air cleaner. So 
we'll do that now. It's a dual element air cleaner. Just two wing nuts, one's on the outside of the cover and one's on the top of the element itself. So we'll pull that off and make sure it's good and clean. We'll probably have some dust and some wood chips on there. And you can take this off, put a new one on or blow it out with compressed air if it's not too bad. I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one. The inside filter looks pretty clean. The outside filter we're just going to blow off. Make sure you get everything out of the inside here too. You can see some wood chips down in there. We don't want that getting inside the carburetor. That looks pretty good. Nice and clean now. Reinstall that. All right, so while we're here, we'll pull the spark plug wire off, pull the spark plug out, and take a look at that. see a few wood chips down in there so I'm going to get some needle on those pliers and we'll get that out of there too. You got big fat fingers like me. Make sure you have a spark plug socket so that the rubber grommet will pull it out for you. We'll take a look at the plug. Looks pretty good. I'm going to clean it off a little bit. Install the spark plug if you need a new one. Now's the time to put the new one in. So the uh, I bought this log splitter slightly used. I got it for six hundred dollars from a guy that had a tree fall in his yard and he bought it to, to cut and split the wood from the one tree and then he sold it to me. So I wasn't really sure how many hours were on it before I got it, not a whole lot, but I know I've put some hours on it since I've had it, and they recommend the first service after 25 hours, and then every 100 hours after that. So I figured it was definitely due for its first service, probably overdue. So we got fresh oil in it. We checked the air cleaner. We've checked the spark plug, We've cleaned all the debris away from the heat points on the motor. And I know you probably don't need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the hydraulic fluid and filter as well. That way I know what I have and I can kind of keep track of how many hours are on it. So let's do that next. All right, so you'll find your hydraulic tank plug on the very bottom near the center. Take you under here with me. There's your plug right here. It's a three quarter inch wrench. It holds, the tank holds about four gallons of fluid. 
So make sure you've got plenty of drain, plant, drain pans ready. So I'll set you up, we'll pull that plug out and drain this fluid. All right, well that's finishing up draining. I'll take you around here and take the hydraulic oil filter off too. All right, so now while we're waiting on all the hydraulic oil to finish draining out and dripping out, I'm gonna save you a little bit of heartache and some research here because it took me a while to figure this out on my own. The oil filter that comes on the county line splitter will give you very little information about finding a replacement. It will tell you it's a hydraulic oil filter. It'll tell you it's model number 60001. Now you can look that up online and you won't find anything. You'll find some recommendations, some Wix filters, uh, some Fram filters, but you will not find one that has a 25 gallon per minute max, has a 200 PSI max, and has a 25 micron element, which is what the stock OEM filter is. You will not find a brand name on this filter anywhere. I looked everywhere. I checked the numbers on the bottom and I looked all around the filter, even on the top. You will not find a brand name. And like I said, you are gonna have a very difficult time trying to cross-reference model number 60001. So after some research, checking with some local parts stores, the only filter that I could find was a tractor supply, which is where you buy the log splitter, so it makes sense. But it is a lens filter, L-E-N-Z. And there's the model number, CP752-30. And it is a 25 micron filter, and this is the hydraulic filter replacement for the county line log splitter. So some of the Wix filters that I found were very similar but they were 10 micron or 15 micron. And as you know, depending on what micron it is, uh, determines how much, how much the filter filters. And the more it filters, the more restrictive the filter is. So you wanna have proper flow, but you wanna have proper filtering also. So I wasn't comfortable switching to a 10 micron filter I wanted to stick with what came with it, which was 25, and the only place I could find it, again, was at Tractor Supply. And that's your part number. So I'm sure there's other filters that'll work fine. I'm sure there's other people that use filters that they've never had a problem with, and that's great. But from my personal opinion, I just wanted something as close to the original as I could find. So we're gonna put the new filter on. Make sure you take a little new hydraulic oil and lube up your gasket on top of your filter 
make sure when you took the old filter off that the old gasket came off with, with the filter. Sometimes they'll get stuck on there, the filter will drop down, but the, the gasket will still be stuck up to the top. So make sure the old gasket came off so you don't double up gaskets and have a leak. Lube up the new gasket and we'll just screw it back on. So we'll fill the new filter up with hydraulic oil. We'll prime the filter before we screw that back on. So as soon as we get that filled up, we'll get the new filter on the log splitter. So don't go super tight on the filter because it will tighten up a little bit once it warms up and starts running. So a little more than hand tight. So let's talk about the hydraulic oil. The log splitter comes from the factory with AW-32 hydraulic oil. Now the manual says that you can use AW-32, AW-46, or any universal hydraulic oil. So I just went with what was in it originally but like I said, you can use the 46 or any universal hydraulic oil as well. All right, when you're putting the new hydraulic oil in, it's pretty clear, so it's hard to uh, read the dipstick. But I think I've got just about enough in there. I don't want to put too much. So I clean the dipstick off really good. And if I can't see it, I'll just use my finger to see where it's wet. And we're good right there. So it says it holds about four gallon total. There's a little bit left in the lines and stuff when you do this, so it'll be a little bit less than four gallon. But we'll tighten this plug back up. We'll start it up. We'll run the hydraulic for a few cycles, and we'll be good. All right, everybody, that's the end of that. The log splitter's all serviced. Uh, like I said, I bought it used. I wasn't really sure how many hours were on it or if any service had ever been done to it. So now I feel comfortable that I know what I've got. The engine oil is fresh, the hydraulic oil is fresh, the filter is fresh, the air cleaner is clean, and uh, I can keep track of what I got going on now. So you have to keep take, if you take care of your equipment, your equipment will take care of you. I uh, believe in that. So hopefully we won't have any issues in the near future. A um, little bit different video today, but I, like I said, I couldn't find anything on YouTube as far as servicing the splitter goes. It's pretty self-explanatory but sometimes it's helpful just to watch a video and to know what you're gonna get into before you actually get your hands on. I know I appreciate those kind of videos, so hopefully somebody will benefit from this. Uh, that's all for today, so if, I hope you can click on some of these videos over here. 
and we will talk to you next time. Please like and subscribe, and I hope